how many of you are aware of ungoogled Chromium, from henceforth being referred to as UGC? Unlike browsers like Brave, Vivaldi, Edge, and other browsers that are trying to be their own standalone thing, UGC is a soft fork, or maybe more akin to a patch set, that strips out Google services, makes a few privacy tweaks, but for the most part is just mainline Chromium. And as with a lot of applications nowadays, it is available over on Flathub, and the Flatpak is managed by the UGC developers. But notice this logo. This is not the logo they were using up until a couple of days ago, and you can still see the old logo in their first screenshot. The logo they were using was the mainline Chromium logo. And I did a video on this back when it first started rolling out, but Flathub has been trying to sort of clean up the store and introduce quality guidelines, sort of promoting applications that they feel have good quality application listings that have high quality icons, high quality names, good summaries, good descriptions, and all of the things that they feel like make a good application store. And one of those things is regarding trademark violations. The name, the icon, and the summary should not include any trademarks that you don't own. This is not about what is allowed to be on the store. They will always allow third-party Flatpak developers who just want to get an application available on Flathub. But the goal here is promoting more upstream development if you're going to package an application, doing that in an official capacity with upstream on board. So if there's any issues with it, you can all work together to make it the best application experience possible. And along with that, they'll promote them on the store. So with that in mind, this GitHub issue makes a lot of sense. Icon is a direct copy of the Chromium icon made on the UGC Flatpak repo made by BBHTT, which I don't know how this is supposed to be said, I'm gonna say as BB Hat. Also, in a lot of them, I don't know if all of them, they often have rights to merge commits as well. So here is the issue in question. Hello. At Flathub, we are tracking a bunch of applications with trademark violations or icons that are a direct copy of other applications' icons. The current icon of UGC, the one they had before the one they've changed to, is an exact copy of the Chromium icon. Please try to use your own icon for the application to avoid trademark issues and confusing people. You can find some resources for icon guidelines in the quality guidelines we just showed before. I think a two month period is reasonable for everyone to come to a solution here. And as you would expect from someone who is not involved in UGC making this issue, it got fairly downvoted. But the developer that got tagged here, they had a very different response, almost immediately marking this as completed and making a series of commits, which are all the same commit they just build on top of each other. So we'll go to the latest version adding UGC specific icon to avoid trademark issues. UGC is just a patch set and does not care about modifying icons, so these things should be distribution specific. Ideally, if others find they need to update the icon again, we might have to find some kind of consensus and put it in some contrib folder. Now, it's not entirely clear to me if they just had these icons laying around and hadn't used them yet, or if they were just thrown together in response to this because the turnaround here was really quick. This was opened on May 29th, 8.39pm in my time zone. This was marked as completed four hours later, and then another six hours later, this last commit was made. So I'm going to assume over that 10 hour period, they probably just made the logos and were like, this is good enough. There's no discussion anywhere in the repo. Maybe they had some discussion in some external chat, but this kind of just happened. So all is said and done then. Well, yes, but it does start a very interesting discussion about application packaging and trademarks. How this is going to be handled is on a project by project basis. But had you have a question why there is this split between Chrome and Chromium, why isn't the upstream project also just called Chrome? Now you might say, well, it's because Chrome has additional features or anti-features depending on who you ask. And yes, this is true. The code base for Chrome is built off of Chromium with additional things. But 
that doesn't mean you have to have a whole separate branding for it. There are projects like Bitwarden which have a proprietary version with additional functionality that don't have a whole separate branding. Well, Chromium does provide guidelines on how their branding actually works. By default, Chromium will build with the open source Chromium assets and branding. The setting is Chrome branded equaling false. The main reason for this is the Google Chrome logo and related assets, that being the Google Chrome name, is a trademark which we don't want to release under Chromium's open source license. This avoids a very annoying issue that happened with Debian and Firefox for a very, very long time, where the license on the Firefox logo wasn't compatible with Debian's free software distribution guidelines, leading to the creation of IceWeasel, which was basically just a soft fork of Firefox that had different branding. Along with this, Mozilla wasn't a fan of distro shipping patches on top of Firefox and then still calling it Firefox. If you were distributing Firefox, it had to be what they give you, it had to be the default settings. But that is all ancient Linux history, which I'll probably save for another video. The point remains, though, that trademark issues are still relevant today. And the point with UGC is at what point does Chromium stop being Chromium? So it's probably still the same application if you're changing default settings built into the application. But what if you were adding in some small patches? What if you start stripping out functionality like the Google services, which is what UGC does? What I'm saying here is how much code really needs to change for it to not be Chromium anymore and for it to be its own separate thing? Is it when you feel like the project is different enough? When you feel like it's more than just this light soft fork where you feel like, okay, this actually is a different thing to Chromium. This is now Brave. This is now Vivaldi. This is Edge. This is Opera GX, so on and so forth. The difference between those two points is massive, but there's this weird middle zone where UGC exists in between and is not entirely clear where it's supposed to be. And someone in the thread brings up this issue. It does not seem like the Chromium icon is trademarked. Much to the contrary, it is open source and thus using it should not pose any issues. Why would anyone get confused by the icon? Ungoogled Chromium is Chromium. So I don't understand what would be confusing about using the Chromium icon. If anything, it's more confusing to use an icon that differs from upstream. I can understand that take for sure, but I do think it's reasonable to argue that the use of the logo could be confusing because, yes, for the most part, it is Chromium. But if you are unaware of this whole ungoogling thing, there are things that are going to be missing if you use ungoogled Chromium. That's the whole point of ungoogled Chromium. It is supposed to be removing things that users of UGC don't want to be there. But if you are not a UGC user and you come across this ungoogled Chromium available on Flathub, you might think it's something different if all you pay attention to is the logo. I think the most amusing part here is the logo is what is being focused on as a trademark issue when the logo is part of their open branding. The bigger issue is the name, not the Chromium part of the name, but the ungoogled part, which is explicitly using Google as part of the name. I don't think there is any argument to be had about whether the use of Google has trademark baggage or not. It very clearly does. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Google has never approached them saying, hey, stop that. Stop using our name or we are going to do something bad to you. That doesn't mean it's fine per se. It's just you haven't become big enough to become a problem that they need to deal with. Unlike, say, a YouTube application that might use the YouTube logo or YouTube in its name. In my absolutely not a lawyer perspective, it's probably a good idea to change the logo to something that is 
not Chromium. Not because of trademark issues, but because you are something very clearly different from mainline Chromium. And the logo is very clearly inspired by the mainline Chromium logo. If you look at it, you're still going to think this is somehow related to Chromium. But it's very clearly not the same thing. The name probably should be changed, but nobody is really talking about doing that. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think any of this matters? Do you think the logo matters? Do you think the name still matters? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you think trademarks are stupid, um, and you want to become one of <laughs> these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to Sully Barapay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Don't violate those trademarks.